Hello everyone, and welcome back to Guild Expedition 5 in Forge of Empires. Now that I've had some time to process and review this new level, I can walk through it with you today. First, let's correct a few mistakes I made in the last video. The Greater Ritual Flame, that you can win from the first treasure chest, is actually better than the normal Ritual Flame, not because of its percent increase in bonus, but because it boosts both the attack and defense of your defending army, while the normal Ritual Flame only does defense. Then there's this new building that you can create to help negotiate, and it's actually worse than I first thought, because you're paying more for goods than you're saving. For example, here, you're paying 30 goods, but if you have four rounds, of five goods negotiated each, that's only 20 goods that you're saving. So it's not worth it. So, with that out of the way, let's get started. For those that haven't watched other videos about level 5, let's do a brief overview. When you first get to the new level, you have two options to beat the encounter battle and negotiate. Unlike other levels, the battle option says defend. This is because you have to use your defending army stats when you battle, instead of the normally used attacking army stats. And this should be reflected once you enter the battle management screen. Negotiating is more similar to other levels, other than the huge amounts of goods that are required for each encounter. The third tab is labeled build, and it allows you to construct three different buildings to help you with the encounter. The first gives your defending army more attack, the second gives your defending army more defense, and the third, like I mentioned before, reduces the amount of goods that you need to negotiate with, but it's not worth it. One other thing that I learned is that you can stack the defender boosts that you have in your inventory. As I showed earlier, my defending boosts are not very high, 273 and 514 respectively for attack and defense for my defending army. So now I can use multiple of these boosts to increase those numbers, at least the defending numbers. So now we're at a respectable 1174% for defense for my defending army, which is an increase from those boosts of 660%. Skipping the battle and focusing on the rewards now, the first chest has the Greater Ritual Flame fragments that I showed earlier. You get 10 fragments and you need 100 fragments to assemble this item. The second chest gives the Divine Skywatch fragments, which gives an attack and defense boost for your attacking army, as well as some forge points. Next is the Feathered Serpent Statue Kit. This building also gives attack and defense for your attacking armies, as well as forge points, and there's three levels of it. Finally, there's the fourth encounter of the level, which gives you castle points, regardless of whether you defend or negotiate, and this chest gives you fragments for the Forgotten Temple, which gives boosts to attacking and defending armies, both attack and defense, as well as a forge point collection boost, which means that every special building that you collect from gets a 20% boost in forge point collection. I'm not sure if the 20% is Oceanic Future specific or if that's through all of the eras, um, but that's a pretty good boost. Now for the most part, the next four levels have the same rewards other than some special avatars that you can win for your profile page. So now I've been able to make it through the first eight encounters by auto-battling. I had to add a little bit more defensive boost to my defending army, but luckily I only have eight encounters left before I finish the level. Like the previous eight encounters, the treasure chests don't hold any new fragments, just some new avatars that you can put on your profile page. 
As I mentioned, I had to increase my defensive boost even more. It's now up to 1,834%. The army that I'm fighting against only has a 507% boost for both attack and defense. When I feel that I definitely just can't move forward anymore by defending, I move to negotiation. As I mentioned, negotiation is similar to other levels of negotiation, except for the fact that every single turn takes a lot of goods. In this encounter, it's 42 of each good per turn. Luckily, this time I got them all correct in the four turns that I had, but sometimes it's worth it to spend the 10 diamonds to get an extra turn. For the last four encounters, just to be safe, it's probably always a good idea to negotiate instead of defend, because the attack and defensive bonuses of the enemy units grows even larger. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes it's worth it to pay the 10 diamonds just so that you can save hundreds of goods. The one additional reward I forgot to mention was the Feathered Serpent Statue Chain Element Selection Kit. This includes three add-ons that you can add to your Feathered Serpent Statue that give either a Defender Boost, Goods, or an Attacker Boost. In the final encounter of the level, you need to use 78 goods for each turn. But it's certainly better than fighting an army with over 1500% attack and defense boost. It definitely helps when you can finish all of your negotiating within four turns. And if you need some help or tips and tricks for negotiating, see the video in the top right corner. So that's level five completed. Second week in a row. Again, I'm probably only doing this for making this video and to obtain some badges on my profile page. Speaking of badges, let's check out what they've added. This badge is for finishing the fifth level. I've now done it two out of the five times for the bronze badge. This is for building fortifications, as they call them, in the fifth level. And this is for collecting the different types of avatars. That's the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it and found it informative, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And as always, keep on jamming.